when we went to the read through, which was, you know, very scary because it was the first time we were kind of meeting everyone. Paul and I had done, you had to sort of said the scenes out loud and talked about them before. So it was kind of lovely whenever it got to a scene with us two, we'd be like, ha, huh, we know what we're doing now. <laughs> we said things out loud together, which was really nice, you know, before starting to know that at least those moments definitely worked. Lenny, for you, when you were casting, what, what, what were you looking for? And was it an easy process? And, and kind of what was it about these two? Sorry, that's about four questions in one. No, no. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think you're looking for that feeling that, of, of, of conviction, you know, that you believe mm. the person in front of you, um, that, you that, that you, don't see the, you don't see the mechanics of the performance. I mean, that's, you're looking for great acting, first of all. Um, and then I think you're looking for, uh, like, it's, it's a combination of, of, of just there's, there being something that chimes in the actor and the character, even if they're very different people, um, just a feeling that there is a kind of, somehow they've managed to connect with the character in, in, a, in an organic kind of way. And then just a the feeling, it really is a very, for me, casting anyway is really a gut thing that you just think they've, like somebody starts and you feel, my God, that's, that's really interesting. Or that's such a kind of, that's the person I can feel the presence of the character. And there isn't just one way of, there's no character for which there's just one way of playing them. There are lots of interesting sort of nuances to different people's takes. But in the case of this show, when I saw both Daisy and Paul on the occasions when I saw them and they were at very different times, Paul came very early and Daisy came quite late in the process. There was a feeling for me and actually everybody else involved that they were absolutely it, that there was just, you know, that you could breathe a sigh of relief that we'd found the, these these actors who could really get inside the characters and and then we brought them together and it was funny when we were there was a a bunch of us in the room and we were doing this the so-called sort of chemistry reads and when Daisy and Paul were together um I looked around after they'd run a couple of scenes and um three or four of the people in the room were in tears so I thought that's probably oh, wow. uh, you know and that's just on a first read um with with the two of them and it was all sort of there at that point and then you know you've got this i don't know this alive energy that feels correct for the book and the and, and the the adaptation and and at that point you can kind of go great because we can really make it now yeah um daisy your accent's fantastic um Thank you. did you have a muse did you have an, did <laughs> yeah. you have an irish muse that you had yeah. I mean, actually, Lenny was like, you should listen to Sally, um, which I really think was the best kind of uh, <laughs> advice because she's she's from Mayo, so she's from a very similar place. But um, but she really does just have this incredibly um, intelligent, clear, honest way of speaking that I think um, thought was really good for Marianne. And, you know, I, I had a brilliant accent coach too, whose name was Paul, different Paul. Um, but I also listened to our Paul as well um, quite a lot because obviously living in Ireland was helpful to kind of get tuned in but my mum's mm. Irish as well so I had I had always had a, an idea of the sounds but yeah I'd say probably Sally was my my muse there's a there's a and it, there's so much truth in 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 this in terms of the relationship that these two you know individuals have and the pool that they have over a space of time you know that they're they, it kind of comes and goes almost as, as waves in a way but in terms of when you are trying to get to that truth visually Lenny was that something that you spoke to both you know your cinematographer but also with with Sally and also Alice Birch as well in terms of of the characters and how you were going to write this as a screenplay to to try and get that across visually I mean it's always the challenge you know when because people well it's a very like it's a it's a really it's the challenge that you have when you're doing anything for the screen whether it's adapted or not in that how do you represent the interior of a person given that you're filming this, you know, you're just looking at people's outsides and you're hearing their voices. But um, so, so whether it's an adaptation or not, that's always the challenge. And then I think it's just this combination of all these decisions around the adaptation itself. And in that context, I think what I would often do is just encourage taking things away, you know, leaving some space, trusting that so much of of discovering something by observing it versus being told it is always more powerful on screen 
and just knowing where that where that line is so that you don't leave it so bare that it just is impenetrable on the one hand but you don't over describe or overstate or over you know put things into dialogue too much so keeping it the right sort of bare and simple and then working with and then Alice and Sally and Marco Rowe were just amazing in terms of their capacity to to also respond to things that occurred in rehearsal with Daisy and Paul and go back to script when we discover interesting ways through scenes. And and then um, I worked brilliant, with a brilliant cinematographer called Susie Lavelle, and then Hetty mm-hmm. worked with another great Irish cinematographer called Kate McCullough. And certainly speaking about my work with Susie, it was just, we watched a lot of, we always, you know, as you do watch references, think about it. But in the end, all you can do is sort of open yourself up to what's happening between the actors and try and find the most kind of vivid way of, and, and simple for me way. I, I, for me, it's important that I don't appear to be, I don't want to be in the frame as the filmmaker. I want it to look like we just happen to be in the wrong. Yeah. And he's frozen. We've, we've frozen Lenny, we've frozen him in time. Um, I wanted to ask about rehearsals with you two, if that's all right, because I wanted to talk about how important that side of it is for you because you know, one of the things with, with this is that we're following these two individuals through over, a, over you know, a, a long period of time. They grow as people. Their relationship kind of grows in you know, one way or the other. But that rehearsal time, how important is that for you? And kind of what did that involve? Yeah, so um, I, I can't remember the exact timeline of it, but I remember after me and Daisy had been cast, there was a slight bit of a hiatus. And then I think we did two weeks, wasn't it, Daisy? It was the guts of two weeks. And uh I, I, we didn't rehearse into, like incredibly rigorously. It was kind of, we would come together for two or three hours and read some of the kind of central scenes in the piece. And then we would, we would just have discussions. And I think it was about us. There's two Lenny's there on my screen. Oh, <laughs> it's oh great, God. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of them frozen. <laughs> better one than one Lenny, two Lenny's. <laughs> the world needs two you. Lenny's, yeah. definitely. But, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so we would... Uh, Come to, and I think it was just because we, we knew the three of us would be working so closely over the next couple of months. It was just about kind of getting to know each other, getting to know what we thought about the characters and how we worked. And it was it was just a really gentle kind of create. Felt very creative, and uh, it, it, I think that energy is harnessed going into the first week of uh, shooting. What about you, Daisy? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, like those two weeks, I- I'd never actually um, rehearsed for anything um, before. So it was new to me and I-, I thought it was amazing to be able to kind of, I guess, first of all, get to know Paul and Lenny really well. So that that first day, which is always terrifying, felt a little bit less like the first day of school because you had a few friends already, which was nice. But I think we, we you know, more, we didn't really, I don't remember really over rehearsing any scenes. I think what we did, which I thought was amazing, was we really sat and we talked really openly for a long time about all the kind of themes and all the kind of um, moments that go through the, the characters kind of go through and and that was really wonderful because you know the book is a is amazing it, you have so much you know to go from but it's also some of the characters and the choices they make are quite hard to kind of get your head around so it was really mm-hmm. nice to have Lenny and to have Paul and to be able to kind of discuss those so we always knew exactly what we were trying to say with each scene. And did you guys spend much time just kind of talking about the characters and, you know, where that relationship was at, at, at certain points and, you know, and, and why they were making the decisions they were making? Was that something that you worked on with the two of you or? Between the two guys together. Yeah. It, it, it always felt like that. We, I think the three of us were on very similar wavelengths. And I think that, that's, I, I think that's the reason that, both me and Daisy were cast, but I also think that that's maybe what drew me and Daisy too, Lenny, is that the conversations, like I remember even in the second callback, which was the first time that I met Lenny, I think we spent more time talk, talking about the character, not even in the scenes that we were doing, just just because like one scene in isolation, especially with characters like this, is far less important than your concept on who these people are. So I think we, I just felt like we were all in the same the same wavelength so the conversations mm. felt like collaborative yeah and it was really lovely because when we went to the read through 
which was, you know, very scary because it was the first time we were kind of meeting everyone. Paul and I had done, you had to sort of said the scenes out loud and talked about them before. So it was kind of lovely whenever it got to a scene with us two, we'd be like, ha, we know what we're doing now. (laughs) We said things out loud together, which was really nice, you know, before starting to know that at least those moments definitely worked. There were, yeah, there were definitely sort of key scenes that we spent a lot of time on and they became sort of touchstones for us for I don't know particularly for way, things that used to the things that would recur or central kind of patterns in the relationship and we would tie those down by working on sort of central scenes across the episodes and that that it is amazing how much work you have to you read the novel it hits you like a sort of a complete thing but as soon as you start to break something into the process of adaptation it feels like you have to assemble it all again and learn it like it from every possible angle and the guys particularly have to be able to jump you know from one stage early in the story to a stage three episodes later maybe across the same day oh wow being able to do that you just need to know it so well at a kind of interior level where you don't have to you know think too hard but you can just step into those different phases well i was just about to ask whether you shot it chronologically but obviously not then no so the the two blocks were effectively they were chronological in the sense that we shot a block for the first six and then a shot a block for the second six. But within, within the blocks, we went location to location because, you know, unless you've the luxury of shooting a scene, upping the entire unit, going somewhere else, and then coming back three weeks later to that location, you, what you end up doing is shooting at each location. So I think we started in Marianne Sligo house and did every scene for the first six episodes that occurs there. And then we'd move to another epi- another location. It could have been Trinity or it could have been the school. Mm. So you're really, I, I mean, I think a testament to Daisy and Paul, if you think about how much they change. Yeah. Like that when you see Daisy again in episode four, how different she is when you see Paul, the end of episode six versus, you know, schoolboy. It's pretty amazing how th- th- they can track those um, phases uh, so accurately. Mm. 